gooey cheese quesadilla. I mean, what could be better than that? I guess that's a kind of a rhetorical question. I mean, just think about it. There's grilled cheese sandwiches, pizza, calzones, cheese fondue. I mean, they all have that irresistible combination of melted cheese and bread. But you know, what could this a little bit better is a homemade flour tortilla. Now, I know I'm the guy that's always showing everybody how to make corn tortillas. I just love them. But the truth of the matter is, it's probably easier to make a good flour tortilla. I mean, you probably already have all the stuff that you need in your home. You don't have to go rushing around looking for fresh ground corn masa or masa harina. I mean, it really basically just starts with this stuff right here, all-purpose flour. And then you'll need some sort of shortening to go into it. I'm going to use some fresh rendered pork fat, but you could use some vegetable shortening too if that suits your taste. Just be sure to get the trans fat free variety. Then I need a little bit of water. For this recipe I'm going to need about three quarters of a cup. And I'm going to stir one just slightly under a teaspoon of salt into that, stirring it till it dissolves and we're ready to put it all together now. Okay, we're going to start with flour. And the all-purpose flour that I need here is about three-quarters of a pound. That'll be about two and three-quarters cups. And then the pork lard. Now, you might be wondering why I'm using pork lard. It's because I just like the way it tastes, and it makes the richest, most savory flour tortillas you could ever imagine. I'm going to need about a third of a cup to go into our flour. Then the top goes on the food processor and I'm gonna pulse it until we get that fat distributed completely through the flour. Now with the machine still running, I'm gonna slowly pour in the water. And when the dough comes to a ball like that, it should be slightly sticky. It's ready, no, no kneading is needed here, but it's ready to divide into balls that we're gonna use to make those flour tortillas. Reach in and get a little bit of flour to sprinkle over the top of it. Pat it out kind of into a sausage shape here. And then using one of these scrapers. I'm gonna cut it into six pieces and then each piece in half to make 12 dough balls that I'm gonna roll up and let rest for about half an hour on a plate covered with plastic. That'll make them easy to roll out. The dough is ready to roll, and I've got this really cool little rolling pan, perfect for rolling out flour tortillas. The first thing that we gotta do is to lightly dust the counter and the dough ball with flour. And then I'm gonna use classic rolling technique. out, Which means you roll away from yourself and you turn the dough about a quarter of a turn after each roll. Perfect technique for rolling out pie crusts or pita bread or flour tortillas, whatever it is. When I get it to about seven inches, I'm going to put it onto a cast iron skillet, the best thing to cook flour tortillas on. It's heated to about medium over medium, between medium and medium high. And immediately, you should hear just the tiniest little bit of a sizzle. You'll see these little bubbles start forming. After about 30 or 45 seconds, it'll be browned underneath and flip it over and bake it on the other side. The more bubbles, the flakier, the lighter your flour tortilla will be. Okay, we'll take our puffy 
flour tortilla and put it into a cloth lined basket here, roll out and bake all the rest of them in exactly the same way, stacking one right on top of another. They'll trap all the heat together and finish their cooking kind of slightly steaming one another. And now back to the question of quesadillas. Gooey, warm quesadilla made with a homemade flour tortilla. Now, what could be better than that? Now, when I'm in Mexico City and it's Saturday and I'm in the mood for quesadillas, this is the place that I come to. It's called the Bazaar Sabado or the Saturday Bazaar, and it's kind of like an, an art fair with a very famous quesadilla stall in it. This is the San Angel section of Mexico City and well forever it's been the sort of unofficial hub of the art world. I mean just a few blocks over here is where Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo had their home and studio and they were always inviting over other famous artists and intellectuals. Believe it or not, this whole collection of galleries and craft shops is only open one day a week on Saturdays. And this is that very well-known quesadilla stall that I was telling you about. In fact, it's a great place to get a lesson in the simple art of quesadilla making. The first thing that you'll notice is that well, there's no flour tortillas anywhere in sight. In fact, the first thing that they do is to take some of that fresh ground corn masa and press it out in an old-fashioned wooden tortilla press, lay it on a griddle, bake it on both sides, and then they add to it whatever toppings, whatever fillings you want for your quesadilla. You can, of course, have cheese or roasted peppers, but they also offer chorizo sausage, a little shredded chicken mixture that they call tinga, some cactus paddles with shrimp, or some stewed squash blossoms. That's fantastic. I can't imagine what could be better than this. Actually, I'll tell you tomorrow. Well, the Bizarre Sabado is a Saturday-only affair. This is definitely its Sunday counterpart. I mean, the middle of downtown Mexico City at the old famous Lagunilla Market, definitely a little more rough and tumble than the Bizarre Sabado. You might want to say that it's sort of like flea market meets antiques fair meets art auction meets pawn shop. No matter what cool things you find here, don't pass up this stall. They make some of the best rustic quesadillas in this whole town. Señora, por favor, me gustaría una quesadilla de quelites. De quelites con masa azul. Uh -huh, por favor, gracias. First, she presses out a kind of oval tortilla with blue corn masa, then lays it on the hot griddle. When it's done on one side, she flips it over, cooks it a little bit longer, and then takes some of that Oaxacan string cheese, lays it directly on the griddle to get it started softening, and then scrapes up that slightly melted cheese and puts it on top of the tortilla along with some cooked greens. These are the lamb's quarters that they have here. Folds it over in style and then serves it on a paper-lined plate. This amazing stuff. What's better than this? 
There's a whole new breed of restaurants in Mexico, well, especially here in Mexico City, that are embracing and reinventing the traditions of Mexican cuisine and culture. This place is called Paxia, which is the ancient Aztec word for peace. I think you'll agree with me that the vibe in here is all cool and calm right in the heart of the world's biggest city. Places like Poxy have proved a delicious point that I've embraced wholeheartedly for years. And that is that Mexican traditional classics can make a smooth transition into world-class fine dining. It's just all a matter of choosing the best ingredients, respecting the techniques, and thinking about fresh ways that you can present things. Now, here in Mexico City, you can go out onto practically any street corner and find somebody making fried quesadillas that are served on a piece of paper on a plastic plate. Well, here at Paxia, they miniaturize all of that and then serve them to their guests as a sort of delicate amuse-bouche just to start the meal. My little crispy fried quesadillas with a swoosh of guacamole. A martini that's made with tropical black sapote and a foam on top that's infused with orange, a classic, classic combination. I mean, I'm in a of luxury. What could be better than this? Now, so far, we've only been talking about gooey, melting cheese in quesadillas. And when you come to a Mexican market, like I brought you here in downtown Mexico City to the great big Merced, well, you'll find things like the classic Chihuahua cheese that'll melt. But now you can find a lot of manchego, Mexican-made manchego here. But to tell you the truth, in a Mexican market, what you find most of is cheeses that don't melt. I call them like garnishing cheeses. And they're a little bit like Parmesan. You can see all of this variety that we have here. You sprinkle it over the top of a dish, and it just makes the flavors pop. And then there's this. Now, if you think that that looks like a drier form of the American ricotta, well, you're exactly right. This is called requeson here. Now, that word ricotta comes from Italian, and it means recooked. Requeson means re-cheesed, and I'll tell you why. In the cheese-making process, you add an enzyme or some acid or culture to milk the curd from the whey, but that whey, that liquid clear stuff, still has a lot of milk solids in it. You can heat it up and, well, you get another harvest of cheese out of it. You get requeson out of it. Now, this stuff is a little bit drier than what we get in the United States and a little bit tangier, but oh, it's incredibly creamy, just melts in your mouth.